Hi, everyone. I'm Steve here with Brian Sanchez. Thanks for being here, Brian. Hey, thanks for having me, Steve. Let's have some fun today. All right. This is an interesting topic. It's, it's a little controversial. Well, first, we'll talk about semaglutide. Uh, let me say what it is. And now, look, we're not doctors. We don't prescribe this. Uh, we're going to talk about semaglutide, and we'll talk about our opinions about it. If you guys are interested, uh, you can go to Invigor Medical. There is a link in the description. Use the promo code VITALITY1, and you can get semaglutide there at a very decent price. Now, you know, and Brian, you know, I, I only promote things of, and I'll, I'll just be up front and say, I wouldn't do it, but I'm not really a candidate because I'm not overweight. I'm not too overweight. Um, and my body's functioning fine. And, but you know, and you know, I'm neutral on this, uh, Ozampic semaglutide. I'm neutral on it. I wasn't. I was against it. Now I've, I'm neutral. <clears throat> that's a big swing because I remember when we first started talking about these, everybody that's listening, if you remember, Steve wasn't a big fan necessarily in the beginning, but not to cut you off, Steve, go ahead. Well, first of all, so let's just say it's just a peptide. Correct. What's I think a that's peptide? Important. A peptide is a short chain of amino acids, totally naturally occurring substance in the body. <clears throat> that your body can make, you know, eat a bunch of amino acids. Um, but I don't think it's usually the cause of weight gain. It's not the root cause. It's not the problem. It's not addressing the problem. And I've had a lot of friends, you know, partners and people that I've talked to about this on the fence, swaying one way or the other. <clears throat> and, that's, I mean, I, I can get into it more, but what are your initial thoughts on semaglutide? Look, you, you guys all probably know it's funny when Steve and I talk about things, you know, we sometimes have a little bit different point of view. I, I have no problem with people using products, but my problem becomes when they get disappointed. And, and here's why. Any type of of rapid weight loss program, whether it's a fad diet, whether you're drinking a specific shake or eating certain uh, diet bars or putting patches on your skin or using some other form of appetite suppressant, or you're going through surgical procedures to try to lose weight if you're morbidly obese, um, you have to really define what you're trying to do. And and there's the semaglutide, osempic, uh, Mongiorno, uh, uh or Juro, however you say it. Those products are out there right now and they're big in the news. First off, with those products, I do not 100% buy into the hype that mainstream media has put out there that it's hard to get and that it's impacting those that need it for medical purposes. Steve mentioned one of the companies we're affiliated with uh, in Vigor. You can get it by going through their doctors. It's a legitimate thing, but they're going to screen you before. They're not just going to hand it over. They're going to screen you first. And same with another group that we work with, Royal Medical Centers. They too will screen you. And you actually have to get a prescription for these things. And I think that's kind of a con to it. It can be a pro in the sense that you have to talk to medical professionals, but that you're going to have to take a look at why you need this product. Um, these peptides, semaglutide, more specifically Ozempic, um, look, you can get these easily. You can... Go online, sign up for these companies. You can get it to your house, deliver it probably within a week if they medically clear you. Um, that being the case, what is it really doing for you? And my understanding of these products, the biggest benefit of it is appetite suppressant. Um, that's okay. It's going to stop you from being hungry all the time. But what are you eating when you're on it? Here's the thing. You can cut your calories and you can do this on your own and not eat sugar. You can um, stop eating, you know, white flour starches. 
you can you can make these adjustments without these products, especially when when I want to make this clear, especially for those of you who are in the gym working out. You've already showed that you're willing to um, go and take care of your body. If that's the case, then it becomes a lifestyle choice after that on how you eat. If you don't change your eating system, whether you go through a surgical procedure like a gastric bypass, whether you use Ozempic, Manjaro, uh, the the tablets, the, the ones you take uh, orally, um, any type of appetite suppressant, any patch that's going to help you speed up, or the old metabolite products. If you don't change the focus of your eating, and for whatever reason, because you're eating less and you're on these products, what do you do when you come off? It's really that simple. If you don't have a balanced behavioral change of eating, then you are going to gain your weight back when you come off of these products. And I'm not saying this to be mean. You go talk to these doctors. They may tell you, you know, yeah, it's good for you. Um, but what are you going to do? And I think everybody has to understand you're going to plateau. There's a, there's a big difference between somebody who's diabetic and they're 200 pounds overweight and they really need to take this off. And they're taking these products to, to level out their bloods. Because the, even for thin people, if you're on Ozempic and these other products, your bloods are going to come back probably pretty nice in your, I'm just assuming, are going to come back nice. Your blood sugar is going to go down. Your cholesterol is probably going to look great. All these little side benefits are going to help. But you're not going to lose the amount of weight of a person that's 200 pounds overweight, especially if you're only 20, 30 pounds overweight. You're gonna, you can expect that your body weight, you can probably lose anywhere between 15 and 25% of, of what you actually are. That being the case, if you're only gonna lose 15% of your weight and you're 200 pounds, do you really need to take these products? And that's what you have to ask yourself. Because a lot of these times with, with, with let's just say the semaglutide and talking to people that are taking it, they hit their goal and they're not losing any more weight. And then they have to make a decision. If you come off the product and you longer, no longer have that appetite suppressant in you, what are you going to do? Have you changed your eating behavior so you're not reaching for the bad products? Or because you're on those products and you're taking these meds or these peptides, have you really changed what you eat? And have you stuck with a new eating program? If you have, you're going to be okay when you come off on the off of the appetite to press suppress it. You might be hungrier, but you're going to be eating healthier. If you have not and you come off, you're going to go back to the same way you, your your body went. Your cravings are going to be the same. You haven't changed anything in your brain. You haven't changed your system at all. So I think it's really, really, really important to look into this stuff. And this goes with pros and cons across the board for all weight loss products. I can lose weight by changing how I eat. It's 100% a choice for me. Now, for some people I get there's food addiction, sugar addictions, and it's harder. I truly support that. If you need something to help you to lose that appetite, fine, go for it, knock yourself out. But for the most part, most people, if they're just looking for a 20 to 30 pound weight loss, can do it without supplements. I think it's just another ease of program. And this is where it gets funny. All these people that I know that were against, let's just say COVID shots. We all know it was out there, right? I know people that were 100% against all the COVID shots, flu shots, all these other shots, and they don't take them. But they see this weight loss program and they start injecting a, an adjusted peptide into their system without looking into what the studies are saying about them. And are there truly a lot of studies out there that show the pros and cons? If you're that cautious about injecting products into your body, why would you go for a weight loss product and do the same thing on something that really hasn't been tested that much? And the reason I bring that stuff up is I wanna talk about the good, bad, and the indifferent about this. Now, flip that over. Have I seen a lot of people lose a lot of weight with this? Yeah, I've got friends that take this stuff and they look fantastic. They really do. But, you know, Steve, you hear that stuff about Ozempic face, Ozempic butt. Let me tell you this, Steve. If you rapidly lose weight, 
do you think your skin's going to get loose? Uh, I, you know, <clears throat> I think everyone's different, but here's a couple things that I've heard from people that I've talked to who are using it. And uh, talked to one of our colleagues and I was, you know, kind of ripping him a little bit today because I saw him do 30 minutes of cardio. He doesn't normally do 30. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah. He doesn't normally do 30 minutes of cardio I'm going, bro, what are you doing? Cardio? Are you, you feeling okay? But I've heard that. See, a lot of people eat when they're not hungry. And they eat when they're not hungry because it's a habit. They might, you know, they eat popcorn with butter dumped on it when they're watching a movie. Or they eat M&Ms. Or they eat candy. Or they eat ice cream when they're doing certain things. Even when they're not hungry. So I've had people tell me that have tried semaglutide that because they would normally eat even when they weren't hungry. But for some reason, the emotional eating stopped. So not only do they not want to eat, because like I said, people eat when they're not hungry, you know, snacking and it's just a habit that has stopped for the people that I know that are trying this. And the key, again, I'm not a doctor. I'm just repeating what I've heard. And I've heard some bad stuff, you know, like the food, the reason you're not hungry is because the food stays in your stomach. Well, that doesn't sound really good. You know, I've heard that. I've heard doctors say that and so on. So you guys got to do your own research, ask your own questions uh, to your provider. And Royal Medical will do that for you. Um, so I've also, you know, people lose weight, no doubt. There's a concern about, Hey, muscle loss. And the key that I've heard from most people that I've talked to, um, health practitioners is you're a small dose. This is not one of those things where more is better. If you take more, you're going to lose more weight. No, the smaller the dose with this, the better it works. So, that's just what I've heard. Um, I'm, I'm neutral on it. Again, you're going to have to get this approved by a medical practitioner who will write a prescription for you. And um, uh, honestly, if I went to someone and said, hey, I want semaglutide, their question back to me would pro it should be, why? Uh, your blood work is great. Uh, you're not overweight. Uh, you're pretty lean for an older guy. Um, they should say no to me. They should say no. And you also did hit a point um, about, look, what are you just going to do this forever? You know, what is the root cause of you gaining weight? So when you eventually get off this or when you do get off of this, your lifestyle has to be different. Your diet has to be different than it was before. Because if your diet is not different than it was before you got on, <clears throat> you got on this medication, you can go right back where you were. I think you're 100% right on that. And I think it's important for everybody to think about this. You know, Steve just said something. When I started my testosterone regiments, I didn't do this thinking that I was only going to do this for a little while. I do did this when I went into my testosterone program, knowing that this is a lifelong journey. It's not going to. Some of these things you might. these products.
Um, the other And I had to get Do you? Yeah. Explain to me why people would want to be on a maintenance dose, Steve. You know, everyone's got to do their own research and make their own choices on this. Important. Important. You have to make your own choice. You have to weigh everything out, the pros and the cons, like we're talking about. You got to research and find out and talk to people. What don't you like about it? What do you like about it? What should I be concerned about? Because, and even then, everyone's different. You hear me say this all the time. Everyone is different. And you just got to realize that this is about health. It's not about being, you know, 7% body fat. Because that's not realistic. And... These beautiful people, celebrities and uh, fitness influencers and all that, they don't look like that either. <laughs> they look like that for the camera. They don't look like that all the time. So try to keep it. I, I would try to keep your purpose with all this geared toward your health, being healthy. Look, your body wants a little bit of fat. Your body doesn't want any visceral fat. That's internal fat. But your body wants some subcutaneous fat. That's fat between your skin and your muscle. And your body wants some of that. It needs some of that. It's healthy and it's important. And everyone's different. You know, uh, that number is different for everyone. So, I, I mean... I, the way I would answer your question is, you know, everyone's different and you get to make your own choices. That's why I'm saying I'm neutral on it. And you can go to Invigor. Like I said, there's a link there and the price is pretty good. If you want to look at TRT, Royal Medical, their link is in there and you can get testosterone, um, which Brian and I both use testosterone, right? There's an injection often. And, you know, I'm, I'm not injecting anything into my quad. I, I just kind of, yeah, look, I, I, I don't care. I, I mean, I put the, the needles anywhere except for in my quad. I'm not putting anything there. I'm like, eh, I could hit anything, you know. But you, you just got to do the research for yourself. And that's why I'm neutral. I'm not, I'm not neutral on TRT. I'm all in, you know, and that means – if your testosterone is low and you've done what you can do to get your testosterone up and it's not where it should be, get it up with TRT. And that's not a play on words. So um, you, don't you get that, Brian? Yeah, I do. Okay. Yes. You, but I mean, but my, my comeback, my comeback, so to that, my comeback to that would be really off the charts. Yeah, and okay. I don't think well, you, you hold yeah. on to that one. Yeah, I, that's something we'll talk about off camera. So, 
But on the semaglutide, the Ozempic, like I said, I've moved over to neutral. Um, if you're obese, I'm neutral, small dose, my opinion. <clears throat> hey, it, for what it's worth to put me on a, on a stance with this, if you work with the medical staff to get this stuff, I'm perfectly okay with it. I'm just going to always challenge you to what's your plan for the future. Once you hit your 20% weight loss, let's say you're 200 pounds and you drop 40 pounds. Now, what are you going to do? If you have a plan, then I will always leave you alone. You have to have an exit plan. You're either going to stay on it forever to suppress that appetite or you're not. And it's the same with any of these weight loss products out there. Are you truly going to stay on the, uh, the, the crash diet plan for the rest of your life? No. What are you going to do when you come off? Have you changed your behavior or did you just crash diet? Why would this medicine be any different in thought and process? You have to understand it. Uh, so, yes, please look at it. Now, we talk about injections. I, I should put out there that I do know um, that uh, uh, with, like, the, the peptides we're discussing on the injections, they're just insulin needles. It's not a, a heavy intramuscular injection. It's something you're sticking into the fat lining of your body. And I've used those kinds of injections with like um, NAD uh, when I've tried NAD, which I think is a fabulous product. I'm a, I support NAD use also. Um, I'm currently not using it. Anyways, um, it doesn't hurt. It's, it's not as scary as doing an intermuscular injection with a 12 inch needle. Right. It doesn't. And you know what you said, Brian, I would say it's, it's that way with everything. You got to have a plan. You can't say, wow, I got my squat up to 450. All right, I'm going to go on vacation now and I don't have to work out for a year. Because guess what? You're not going <laughs> to squat 450 anymore. Right. You can't stop. You, and if you stop semaglutide, which you probably should at some point, what is your plan? Hey, I got, and people do this all the time and it's, I don't get this thought process. I did it. I got down to my goal weight. Now I'm going to sit at home and I'm going to eat tubs of ice cream. Wait, you want to flush all that work down the toilet? Why would you do that? It, it's not, oh, I did it. I did it. Okay, now I can eat ice cream. No, you can't. Not unless you want to go back to where you were. I don't have to do squats anymore. No, you're going to get weaker if you don't keep going. If you start eating more when you get off of these uh, peptides, um, these weight loss peptides, if you start eating more, you're going to gain weight. Simple as that. Fact. That's an absolute fact, everybody, and you have to understand that. And I actually think um, if, if I think I read the small print on this, when, they, when these products first came out and they were supposed to be directed into the uh, diabetic uh, the theater, if you will, for people with diabetes, when those things came out, I think in the small prints or in little things here and there, everything said you can lose this weight with proper diet and exercise. And this is the big companies pushing it in the direction for the diabetic assistance. I would have to make the same assumption that to gain the best benefit of these products, if you're just using it for weight loss and you're not diabetic, to gain your optimum level of weight loss, it has to be done with diet and exercise. Yep. You better work out, you better resistance train, and you better eat protein <clears throat> to maintain as much lean tissue as possible. Protein up, resistance training up, really important. Because otherwise well, what you're going to kind of waste away if you don't do that. And I would think I would look at learning how to eat as many products as you can that are healthy for you that you can that give you a tremendous sensation of being full. I think that would really help if you're, you know, when you're looking at what to eat and how to eat, look for those kinds of products. Because to me, I feel full when I eat a lot of protein. Yeah, I do. I do. Things like apples make me feel full. You know, I mean, these are types of things that I know do this for me. Um, you know, I just wish I ate more of it. Apple side. All right. I like apple danishes. Is that, is that the same, Steve? Uh, those don't count. Those don't count None. for anything good. Ah, oh, darn it. 
puts a smile on my face. That's good. You love my smile. All you right, Brian, we'll have to come back and talk about some of the other <laughs> different <clears throat> weight loss methods <clears throat> that people are trying, but we're going a little long here. So there you go, everyone. If you have questions, put them in the comment section. And what we can do is respond to your questions accordingly about or, or how people that we've talked to, doctors that we've talked to, which I have talked to multiple doctors about this, and people that are using these weight loss medications. We can respond to your questions according to what they're telling us. So, uh, and look, if you have experience with this, please let us know. Tell us how long you've been using this and what's happened and what your plan is. Love to hear that. Yes, I would love to hear the plan. Yeah. All right, Brian, thanks for your time. Thanks for being with us. Take care, everybody.